would like to call to the floor Mr. Adam Gonschreck, Vice President of Transition Technologies, PSC. And he will tell us about the concept of uh, digital platforms, uh, the concept of Industry 4.0, how this translates into modern factories, which is another way of telling about factories of the future. Adam, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chris. Good afternoon. My name is Adam Gonsharek, and I am R&D Director at Transition Technologies PSC, and I am in charge uh, of all augmented reality, digital twin experiments, research, and implementation projects, and will be happy to tell you about a few of the examples how we help to apply digital transformation concept with our customers. Before I jump to the main topic, let me share some info about our company. Uh, we have 12 years of experience in implementing product lifecycle management solutions. Uh, four years ago, we started intensively building IoT practice uh, with one of the leading IoT platform called, called Thingworks. We also have dedicated R&D team working heavily on augmented reality, mixed reality concepts and implementation. And we are also outsource service provider to our partners worldwide. Uh, we are also part of the entire transition technologies group that focuses on delivering advanced software solutions for the industry. So my point of view will be a software house point of view, a software company point of view, dealing with manufacturers and continuous processes. And we had a great opportunity to uh, take this um, digital transformation concept from different angles as we deliver solutions for energy market, for heavy industry, uh, delivering outsourcing services, new solutions for biomed, and also uh, solutions for gas markets. So we have a lot of opportunities to, to learn the input from our customers and try new concepts. New concepts uh, with six fields of expertise. Implementation services, product lifecycle management services, process monitoring and industrial connectivity, applying artificial intelligence and data science services for industrial use cases. Of course, AR and different flavors of AR I mentioned. And Internet of Things concepts. And with that experience, uh, I would like to share with you my thoughts about future trends for manufacturing industry. And because we serve end users, the most important priority for us is to put human at the very center of the manufacturing system. To assist people and um, reduce the cognitive load during decision making. And to do that, uh, we have worked many times with AR guided instructions and different flavors of instructions, many hardware platforms, like one of the device I have on my head. Uh, we also see a big trend in collecting data at the every single stage of the product life cycle, from conceptualization phase, through design, release to manufacturing, and then operations, usage, servicing, after sales, phase of the product lifetime. And it makes sense, uh, and it's technically feasible, because since last years we have a rapid development of IoT platforms for real-time visibility of such data. And it makes sense to apply machine learning, try to do predictive maintenance, to find patterns, to find anomalies, to find correlations, and generate suggestions to the end user, to maintenance staff, to the designers, so to many stakeholders interacting with the physical products at the different stages of their life. And as I mentioned, many stakeholders, it makes sense to build platforms 
and benefit from the network effects. And I would like to focus on that last aspect because, in my opinion, it's the most important trend for manufacturing, manufacturing industry. Good platforms are multi-sided platforms. And let's take one of the examples. I will use Uber analogy for that case because uh, Uber is not yet another middleman, middleman that takes value without generating value. They stimulate passengers and drivers to access the platform. And because they do that at the same time, it generates mass effect, snowball effect, because they generate demand, they can provide faster pickups for the passengers, passengers are more happy to use those services, and drivers are more happy to generate value from those services because of the higher utilization of the network of drivers. That leads to higher geographical coverage and higher utilization of the entire driver network, which also reduce the downtime of the driver and also make the cost structure more simple, reduce the cost structure. And that makes harder to compete for other competitors. And that opens new possibilities for new services. And with that snowball effect, we will have more and more data circling through all the stakeholders involved in the platform. And that opens another possibility for continuous improvement, for autonomous vehicles, or maybe for establishing a relationship between municipalities and other stakeholders. And as I mentioned, data, there is also data network effect. If we go back to manufacturing industry and try to get data from suppliers, from machine builders, from the end product producers and end users, more data means that algorithms can be smarter. Smarter algorithms makes the product smarter, which means that more people will, in the end, use those products and generate more and more data. Why it is important? We are in the midst of fourth industrial revolution, and every, every revolution took some time to get at, at, at full speed. It did not happen in one day, in one year. It took 10, 20 days, and 20 years for full adoption. And with this, these platforms and network effect, it's much easier to, to cross this barrier for full adoption, where different stakeholders, either technology visionaries, integrators, or the end user that are brave enough to try new things, can generate the real disruption. And how we do that? We simply compare technical capabilities of hardware platforms, software platforms, our skills, with domain knowledge, challenges and opportunities coming from our customers. That help us create bigger value and deliver this value faster. Example, recently we delivered proof of concept projects where Internet of Things meets augmented reality. We worked with European machinery producer to deliver next generation human machine interface for the operators and high quality training content delivery for our customers maintenance stuff. We did that by taking few ingredients, IoT platform, AR platform, wearables like that, and combine it with our skill set, with our experience, to help them define and implement their AR strategy, because they want to make their after-sales support business 
more competitive and more profitable. How we did that? We started working with the customer within one of the Horizon 2020 projects. European projects under the umbrella of factories of the future focused on building a digital twin of the factory, a kind of digital replica of the physical factory, taking advantage of data acquisition, data analytics, simulation and optimization algorithms. And as we started with data acquisition topics, we then learned that the real value lies on the level of human machine interface for customers' customers and for customers' maintenance staff. What we did. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the customer's uh, shrink wrapping machine that is 15 meters long and has more than 60 operation points, which means that the operator can configure machine in those, those points, uh, adjust to changing production orders, or do some maintenance work. And we built a glanceable user interface with micro mashups for such a micro display like that to deliver hands-free experience real IoT data insight and maintenance instructions with hands-free experience, voice navigation, text-to-speech functionality. So the operator does not need to spend more than three seconds to have a glance at the micro display and consume the data. And of course, we had to explore a bunch of user experience, user interface options to deliver comfort user experience. How it looks? I have a very short demo that presents the process of creating the application with almost no coding. So this is the benefit of using one of the platform. This platform is called ThingWorks. And we can visually create AR experience in minutes. We extended the platform with some custom widgets, some custom graphics. We delivered an app template. So the authoring process is more similar to filling a PowerPoint, PowerPoint template than doing real programming, real code development. And with such a template, it's just simply to use drag and drop to connect with IoT data to fill it with maintenance instructions and publish the experience that can be later on just downloaded and used in this way. So here we have a, some kind of marker to identify the machine. And we are using voice navigation, text-to-speech functionality to go through the user interface and explore data, explore procedures, KPIs, and other machine-related documentation like movies, manuals, drawings, etc. Even the device can read the instructions to the operator, so he does not have to focus on the display at all. He can just do his job and even learn on the fly. The same use case, but for training content delivery on another device, on HoloLens. Here we have rich 3D material, 3D content, and the same concept. And in that case, two, three, four other people can join the session and be trained simultaneously. Very immersive. Another use case, just put the manufacturing space design to another level. Create a 3D mesh of the factory, take measurements, and just arrange the space with machinery, with robots, in one-to-one -one scale. So we can scan the area, we can take automatic measurements, we can take additional manual measurements, 
and then do the modeling and design in augmented reality in physical space and validate that instantly. How that works? This is the result of two weeks of work where we have only one cut data and everything else was either designed by us or we scanned physical machines and put them into this digital context. And it's a beautiful example of bidirectional digital physical convergence because we took physical things into 3D space and then we put this 3D space into the real factory floor and presented in the context of future factory line in the real facility. What would be the, fu the future? I'm sure that devi definitely future relies on platforms and the network effects between many stakeholders involved in this rapid prototyping, rapid implementations, and then scaling up the use cases. And there are many emerging platforms. There will be no winner, no single winner. Uh, I am sure that the community will decide what to pick and from which providers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Adam. Any questions? for Adam from the floor. Doesn't seem to be the case. I don't see the app slide coming up. Then maybe, Adam, could you comment on the project improve that you refer to? Um, we had a question before about SME involvement. Uh, the machine builders that are involved there are not yes. giants, I think. They're mid-caps or how? It's a mix. Oh, it's a, it's mix. a mix of big companies and SMEs. Right. How would you comment the applicability of, well, the transfer of these kind of technologies into SMEs in this, in this case? What's well, the kind these of? Are, these are the examples that were developed uh, under the project umbrella. Mm -hmm. and, and then we are working on wrapping it up on some kind of repeatable offering. Okay. And uh, because we can deliver uh, this, let's say, rapid prototyping, rapid, pro rapid proof of concept, I think it's more accessible to SMEs because they do not have to uh, invest uh, big amounts of, of money. Mm -hmm. They can just try and at least fail fast. This is the approach from software industry that could be ap applicable in every, every industry. Right. Try and fail fast. Okay, on that, any other comments, feedback from the floor? Well then, I thank you again thank for you. also your very demonstrating presentation.